Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Long time no see, I was uh, running on schedule, but I still want to share this effect with you, which may not be very interesting into you. However, it's a very important piece of a uh, bigger and more complex effect I was doing these days. And there are some interesting background story I want to share with you because I think it's kind of very important how you approach an issue uh, in your own project. So let's jump into Blender and discuss it along the way. So here we are in Blender. And uh, as I call this uh, cross tiering effect, the first thing that came up uh, in my mind is to do a cross simulation. And I hate uh, simulations in Blender in general, whether it's a kind of cloth simulation, soft body, fluid, or even rigid body system. I didn't have good experience with them. And I do not want to touch them, honestly. But I still looked into some references. Unfortunately, they didn't seem a lot. On the other hand, I've seen some references using geometry nodes. Um, people are so smart that they made um, cross simulation solver in geometry nodes, but I didn't want to pay two euros for that because I was questioning that, do I really need a complex simulation system in order to achieve what I want? I highly doubt. So I was also watching my own references, um, my own tutorials in the past, and I came up with this video. Basically, the concepts are being taught in the past, but I'm going to repeat it again uh, with a little bit difference. But um, this is kind of very simple effect, as I would say. Okay. So here I've. Uh, I have my orthographic view camera and I just hit number pad zero into the camera and uh, I need to rotate my plane so I can see that at a geometry node tree, I'm going to use a grid node to replace with my plane so that I can control this kind of parameters freely. I'm going to check the wireframe. I need to divide that into kind of a square pieces so that by using a subdivide mesh, I can divide everything evenly, okay? I need a kind of high poly counts for my whatever kind of cross tiering effect. And then I need a delete geometry. Uh, you can also use the set parade geometry. They're basically using the same code, uh, having basically the same level results. In this case, I'm just using the delete so that we deleted everything, oh, oh. Uh, and uh, generally speaking, you can just uh, by manipulating this selection or mask, you can decide which polygons to delete. And in this case, we're going to use the te noise texture. Okay. And you directly plug that in. You can visualize this texture, but it seems you delete everything still. I'm going to make a kind of a threshold. And it should be less than. And then you can see we recovered the entire polygons and by manipulating from zero to one, you can see we're deleting all these polygons with this noise texture. Okay. Right now we are mapping our noise texture with the position attributes in this vector. Okay. And I want to replace that with our UV map. And the UV map of our grid is basically going from zero to one on one axis and zero to one on the other axis. This means that uh, if I'm stretching my grid, the UV map will be stretched and our noise texture will be stretched away yet. Okay. And uh, here I'm going to take a multiply. So there's one, one, one. And by decreasing this X value, I'm stretching this entire noise texture on the X axis. So it becomes elongated. By playing with this less than, you can see this effect. This is a nice transition effect, but there is kind of issue that there are uh, islands uh, missing in the Pacific Ocean, which is not 
what I'm looking for. To make it more like kind of cross tiering effect, I want everything to be attached on uh, one side of our plane. Okay. Which means one side of plane must disappear uh, much later in this entire process. And to do that, I'm going to use this concept of UV map. So here, let's do a separate XYZ of our UV map. And we can visualize how this UV map is showing on the X axis. As you can see, there is a zero to one from one side to the other. I'm going to do a mirroring use the color ramp so that I have zero on one side. It should be one on one side and there should be a zero in the middle. And then we are adding these values using the mass add with our noise texture. And once we are doing this less than you can see, that's uh, everything are pulling apart. Okay. But our noise textures are less prominent in this entire process. So basically we need to interpolate this zero to one uh, in a very different way so that we can emphasize the decrease of our noise texture in the middle part. And you can do a float curve if you do not want to deal with kind of uh, mass functions. And actually you can see that by playing around with this kind of values, you can actually see in a very nice effect immediately. So something like that, pulling apart. I think we are already getting a kind of very nice effect. There are a little bit of flaws if you uh, see very close, but you can try to play around with the seed of our UV map, try to change all this kind of noise texture to see how it goes, whatever, until you find a kind of a satisfied result. Okay. And uh, other than this kind of float curve, another method is that you just uh, do a mathematical function, which is called a plow, uh, power. It's basically doing the same thing with this float curve. So whether you want to draw one or you want to set a number, it's basically uh, they are basically the same and free to choose. And then another important thing to make it a little bit more organic is that it looks kind of too cubic in the process. Okay. Uh, one way is that you can increase the amount of subdivision. You can type it into seven or eight. But another method I would recommend you to just is just to smooth. Uh, it's just to put a smooth modifier on top of it. So let's take a set of position. And uh, there's a position in the position. Nothing changed, but we can blur this attribute, the vector, and then we take the iteration. Then you can see everything becomes a little bit uh, organic with tiny attachments in between. And then you play around with these kind of values. You can decrease uh, the y-axis or increase the y-axis. Okay, it looks like something like that, whatever, whatever. Okay. Change the seed. Looks kind of nice. Okay. So this is basically it. Yeah. And again, this is just kind of a simple, simple demonstration for myself in order to apply this kind of concept for a greater context, uh, for a greater context. So, um, basically, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.